This episode was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Hi, Hi. I'm, Jess I'm Jess Keating, and this, this is Animal Logic Second Nature. Second nature. Second nature. Second nature. I should like to tell you that I have seen some of the experiments shown in this film. As you can imagine, technique is everything. The natural world is filled with imposters. These animals disguise themselves to look like something they're not. Yet their goals are not unified, and different species use mimicry for a variety of reasons, from defense to attack to camouflage. Mimicry has formed the basis of many of our imaginary worlds. The replicants of Blade Runner, the Cylons of Battlestar Galactica, and the shape-shifting scrolls of Captain Marvel, to name a few. And like all good science fiction, they take inspiration from nature. In a nutshell, mimicry is an adaptation that helps an animal, the mimic, resemble something else, the model, with the intent of deceiving predators or prey. There are a few broad categories of mimicry. The first is Batesian mimicry. This is when an animal adapts to look like a more dangerous animal. This is the sheep in wolf's clothing method. Species that use Batesian mimicry generally imitate species that are aposematic, species that have evolved strong warning signals to tell predators that they're dangerous. This strategy works best when the population of models far outnumbers the mimics. Otherwise, predators wouldn't be particularly wary of their aposematic prey, whose bark turned out to be much worse than their bite. Probably the most iconic Batesian mimic is the mimic octopus. Unlike many other mimics, they don't just stick to one model and are able to copy a variety of species, usually venomous ones. They can rapidly change their body shape, pulling their arms back and swimming along the ocean floor to resemble a banded sole, a type of flatfish that has poison glands along the base of its fins. If the mimic needs to swim across the open ocean, they will display a striped pattern and hold their arms up around them to resemble the venomous lionfish. And perhaps most impressively, in an act of defense, they will bury themselves leaving just two arms exposed to resemble the highly venomous sea crate, a sea snake with enough venom to kill an adult human. In short, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it's probably a mimic octopus. Similarly, this is not a bee, it's a hoverfly. These stingless flies disguise themselves as bees in hopes of deterring predators. Also, this is not an ant, it's a mantis. These baby predators have adapted to resemble ants, which are notoriously less tasty than mantids. Likewise, this is not a snake. It's a hawk moth caterpillar. These caterpillars have adapted themselves to resemble highly venomous vipers for obvious reasons. And finally, these are not honey badgers. They're cheetah cubs. Batesian mimics are found all over the world, and they're particularly common in butterflies and moths. Many species of butterfly that are tasty to predators, like the tiger leafwing, mimic butterflies that aren't so tasty, like the famously disgusting Heliconius. Several species of moth will use acoustic mimicry. They will mimic the sounds of moths that are less appealing to predators, like the tiger moth. The Phonomuta moth is an extraordinary case as they're deaf but can reproduce tiger moth sounds. Cuckoos use mimicry as a core component in their parasite-host relationships. Cuckoos are brood parasites and lay their eggs in another bird's nest, tricking them into raising their young. The famous brood parasite, the cuckoo bird, invades the nest of a pair of titlarks. The cuckoo will lay its own egg in the nest while stealing away the titlark's egg to eat it for itself. And here come the titlark to chase the cuckoo away. But the damage has already been done. The eggs have been swapped. Eventually, the cuckoo egg will hatch, and the titlarks will raise the cuckoo as their own. They've evolved plumage that resembles sparrowhawks, 
and scientists have found that reed warblers, a cuckoo host species, are less likely to attack a cuckoo that more closely resembles a hawk when they first invade the nest. Likewise, several different species of spider mimic ants. Though this mimicry comes at a cost, the small waste they have to adapt to resemble ants greatly reduces how many egg sacs they can have and thus limits their reproduction. Having made this super nursery, the mother takes no more interest in her young, and she soon dies. The hawk moth caterpillar isn't the only caterpillar that's pretending to be something that it's not. The eastern tiger swallowtail has false eye spots and an appendage that sticks out of them that looks like a snake sniffing the air with its tongue. It also looks identical to Caterpie. The second group of mimics are those that use Mullerian mimicry. These groups all send the same honest signals that they're dangerous. This is similar to aposematism in that many are displaying bright coloration, but the difference is that the entire group will display similar patterns, mimicking one another. This is why poisonous frogs are brightly colored and why wasps and bees share their iconic colors. This can be seen in mammals by the white and black stripes that honey badgers, skunks, and polecats share. Emsleyan mimicry is when a deadly animal mimics a less deadly animal. And a teacher is explaining that there are two kinds of attack, with warning and without any warning. This one is interesting because unlike other mimics, they aren't trying to look as scary as possible. They're trying to look kind of scary. If a deadly predator is so deadly that anything that attacks it will die, then the attacking predators can't learn to avoid them in the future, and other predators will continue this rate of attack. The deadly predator would thus benefit from camouflage rather than aposematism, as it would reduce the number of attacks. But in special cases, like with the Texas coral snake, they are able to imitate the similar looking but much less deadly false coral snake. This allows for predators to attack false coral snakes and not die, thus learning to avoid those types of snakes in the future and reducing the overall number of attacks on Texas coral snakes. Well, this is our little coral snake buddy here. I just kind of wanted to go over some of the coral snake facts that we have. He has that, that red on yellow pattern that everybody's talking about. Uh, same thing with any non-venomous uh, uh, snakes that that kind of look like coral snakes they can they can also have the red and yellow pattern that the coral snake normally has if you're too deadly you can't teach lessons this leads us to aggressive mimicry this is the wolf and sheep's clothing approach many of these strategies involve using lures to mimic things that their prey eats for example the frightening alligator snapping turtle has a tongue that resembles a worm they'll open up the nightmare fuel that they call a mouth and wait for prey that are dumb enough to try and eat the worm that is patiently waiting for them in what must look like a cave of horrors. Then, snap. No animal can outsmart the allure of allure. Perhaps the most terrifying aggressive mimic is the Iranian spider-tailed viper. They employ both a mimic lure and highly effective camouflage to hunt their prey. The tips of their tails resemble spiders, and they will sit perfectly still, flicking their tail to and fro, as if it were a spider, in hopes of tricking a passing bird. The black drongo is a small bird found in Asia that mimics the alarm calls of several species, including the meerkat. Hearing these false alarm warnings, the meerkats will abandon whatever they just caught to flee for safety, leaving the meal all to the drongo. Finally, we come to what might be the most beautiful of all the mimics, the orchid mantis. These gorgeous mantises have evolved to be almost indistinguishable from orchids. They use this camouflage when hunting. They'll climb up an orchid and stand next to it. When a flower-seeking fly comes by for a snack, the mantis strikes. Looks really do kill. The orchid mantis is just one in an amazing order of highly camouflaged ambush hunters. One of the coolest is the dead leaf mantis. If you want to learn more about this amazing insect, then you should watch The Prey, which is streaming right now on CuriosityStream.
The doc is only 11 minutes long, but it feels like watching a Marvel movie. It's action-packed, tense, and shot in a way that I've really never seen before in a nature documentary. The Prey has been nominated for and won some pretty impressive awards, too. It's non-stop action from an insect that likes to spend its time as still as possible. I'm honestly still trying to figure out how they got some of these shots. It's so freaking cool. And you can watch it for free. Just go to curiositystream.com slash animalogic and claim your 30-day free trial with this promo code, animalogic. If you love documentaries as much as I do, then I think you'll really like CuriosityStream. It's a subscription streaming service that has over 2,400 titles, many of which are fascinating nature documentaries. They have another doc from the filmmaker behind the prey called Debugged, which you should watch right now. If you like those, you should follow CuriosityStream on Instagram too. They post a lot of really cool behind the scenes snippets with the filmmaker and his creepy crawlies. And it was, you know, starting from a really wide angle shot, Look good. 16 millimeter. And then as the camera moved forward, you would eventually come into the macro world of the insect. You had to get a dolly set up. You had to have a special type of lens that you could zoom as well as focus at the same time. If you're looking for something cool to binge this weekend, you should sign up for CuriosityStream. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe down below for new episodes of Animal Logic Second Nature every other week. Thanks so much for watching. Great, immensely powerful arms, each with its two rows of deathly suckers. Ooh, look out, that slithering death is right on you. He'll crush your bones into jelly. Look out, boy, look out!